pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Holy Father in heaven, we pause at this time to give thee the thanks for our life and our very being and everything well with us as it is. So thank for all the blessings you've given to us in this life. We ask your blessings now upon us as we enter into this meeting, that we will do so with the understanding for the betterment of the cause of this community, and may make every decision be made consciously of the fact that we need to improve and do what's right for our citizens. God guide and direct us tonight and all way through our life. In Christ's name, amen. amen. I'd like to welcome everybody out tonight. Uh, our first meeting in our commission room. It's not really finished yet, but we're closer than we were this time last year. So we've got a lot of construction going on between here and the main office down the hallway. So hopefully by the next time, we'll, things will be a little more situated and we'll be a little more play. So forgive our mess. Go ahead and get started. The first item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. Make a motion to approve minutes. Second. Have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify by the aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Next item is the bills. I move to pay all bills. Second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify with the aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. <coughs> Excuse me. Next items. First item under old business is the uh, water and sewer for Beaverdam Village Edition. Yes, I have a plan from my office. I guess if we'll come back from closed session, I'll have them. We can look over to approve. Okay. The okay, next item is approval of the second reading of the 2017-18 budget amendment. I move to approve the second reading of the budget amendment. Second. We have a motion and second. Uh, any further discussion? Those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. New business. First item is the first reading of the 2018-19 budget. I know everybody's just getting it tonight, but as you are aware, this takes two readings, and so we have a first reading tonight, and we have a chance to look over and make any changes prior to our June meeting. We can't really dissect it that close. I've moved to approve the first reading of the 18-19 budget. Second. Okay, we have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion pass. We'll just have to look at it and bring it back. Yeah. Well, that's question. pretty much standard. Yeah. Next item is approval of resolution 1819 municipal road aid. Any different? We got last year in Mount. I don't even know what we got last year. Well, they're changing around a little bit on how they're paying it out. The governor is, but it's not a whole lot different. We don't have any choice. They give it to us and say, this is what they're going to give you. I make a motion that we approve that resolution. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify the aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Item three is uh, mobile, use mobile home sales. Nancy? Yes. Um, I just gave and handed out information to each one of you, a letter from uh, uh, Robert Vick Powers, Jr., attorney law. And, and, for the, the Easy Eat Pawn Shop, which is the uh, machine. She's back there. Say you want. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said it was here. Well, then she could probably tell you what she wants to do. Okay. Should I feel it friendly? No, you can stand you can there. Stand there. We can sit down. We don't okay. just, or, just, if you want to hear you. Okay, so um, I've had several customers come in and like ask me about their electric bill and all the long. And like I kind of like tossed the idea around with my husband, and um, we have a joint limited company, Copper Ridge, Trans Copper Ridge Transport, and they move my belongs to the licensed indentured. And we just thought about buying a couple that are repossessed and uh, working on them on their lot, and then bring them to my lot to uh, sell them because I'm not going to anyone. So you only want to bring a couple in. You're not wanting to bring like 10 or 15 in, just a couple. No, and I agree. Uh, I think our, our attorney put in the letters like, 
if we had to, we'd only display one at a time. Yeah. I'm sorry. Whatever what? you, whatever will be okay. suggested. Yeah. I will. Well, my first question was where are you going to put them all? But if it's only one or two, I see you've got enough room for those. Yeah, yeah. on the left side of my property, yeah. like uh, in between uh, my building and Big Ben Building Supply. How, how much land is it there, Eric? How many different types of businesses you can have on one, one lot? And that's my question because I don't know. Uh, the, uh, the, this is a business three, which does allow uh, you to have a mobile home sales lot. Like you put a car lots and tractor sales lots, all that uh, is permitted. It's not under conditional use, and none of this would fall under conditional use unless the city wanted to put conditions on this. So I didn't. I felt like I needed to refer it on to the city and to an attorney because I cannot find whether you tell me how many businesses you can have on one lot. If it were residential, you could only have one main structure, meaning one home or. Uh, you know, all a lot of residents one, but that does not refer back to business. So I don't know that answer. And so I'd like you all to give input on it. And I did, uh, I think I gave you some of the uh, information that's on a big three as well as ABS that. Well, if she took one in on Pond and then was going to resell it, there, there's no doubt she could probably do that. So. I don't see what the difference is. Well, as far as on pond, you know, uh, then it becomes part of that main business, and that's correct. And that's how we had a car lot up here for sale on up the road. But don't you, you have like, don't you, don't you like rent U hauls and stuff too? Or did, you used yeah, to, I don't know if you still do or not, but I mean, you used to, isn't that? That's a different type of business, but it's still on the same principle, isn't it? Yeah, and that's why I was asking that because we've had so many that have started selling them all, you know, those small buildings carports and different things and that just kind of come in and and you know and I thought that it wasn't a problem with it so I'm just needing to find out how much you do want different businesses on one lot. Uh, it's a B3 I mean that's the only thing <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I'd be all for it if, but, if it were good businesses I wouldn't care. Yeah. You know, we got to go happening we can't really throw the bait can't throw the baby out of the wash water. We already got the precedent started. Well, so. And how, did, how does it affect the business license? I did yes. ask that. Did they sell um, another license? We talked about that, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And um, there's just an additional fee okay. added on oh, to yeah. the license. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
sales, trailer sales, or a single sale? Which is you never have more than one. Or two. Or two, two, two at the most on a lot of time. It, it clearly is not included in a conditional use. The question is whether it's included in a primary use. Um, and it is, as she's, as Nancy's indicated, it's, it's, as it's structured, it's very broad. And uh, it, it uh, I think, clearly needs to be revisited as to what it says. Okay. But the way it's worded now, we have nothing to prevent this business license being sold. Oh yeah, we have to approve it. We'd have to prove it. I think I think you can limit how it's going to be used. Now whether uh, whether you're talking about a single trailer at a time or multiple trailers at a time, I think you can I think you can designate what that's going to be. Um, in other words not more than a trailer at a time, not more than five trailers at a time. And I think Erica said that she wouldn't want yeah, more than two. two. Yeah, I think yeah, right. Then I think it's up to the city to determine whether or not you're going to allow two trailers to be located on that property of that size with other activities going on there. I think that's something y'all have got to decide. Yeah. Are you going to move the U-Hauls to the back or the yeah, other side? Yeah, I don't think the... I don't, the, the Taco truck for mm -hmm. the Salvadorian. I don't think that they're going to be there anymore. So I'm probably going to move the U-Hauls to that side yeah. and then just keep them on the left side. I think that they're going to have to stay at the, um, the Hispanics for... Yeah. yeah well, if you do allow it, allow it, then uh, one thing I would say is because you do have so many things that come close to the road and then they come a little closer to the road and then they come a little closer to the road. Something that large needs to stay back from like 25 feet at least uh, because your building should always be 25 feet you uh, in the b3 you need to have that setback so that nobody's blocked from pulling in and out and back out of these other businesses as well so you could put some stipulations on it i don't see why you couldn't uh if you decide to do that uh, and state exactly how many yeah, so I mean, the primary reason for people I mean, coming to, to your lot for the trailer, they're going to buy it from our lot, right? So they, you pretty much just like show the home in a sense like a realtor. Okay, so I mean, you know, the nicer home you show, they're, okay. And I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm glad, I'm, I'm kind of learning, you know, too, as this the whole thing is going on, so. I was just thinking how much traffic would that cause? You know, two trailers. It, you know, I mean, you have people pulling up because I, I see her point as far as the concern. You got people, you know, coming in and get U-Haul trailers. You know, you got somebody renting in, somebody checking one in. You got the pawn shop, you know, so uh, I understand that. That's why I was, um, you could essentially kind of guide your traffic. You know, like say you're going to show them on the right time. We well, also have two entrances, which is you have one from yeah, one side and one yeah, from the other. Yeah, and, uh, that kind of helps separate them. Multiple businesses that have one structure, which I believe she had said at, at, at the beginning, so I was just kind of thinking out loud, which not all the time smart, but yeah. Mr. Conway, I think he could tell you that this letter that we did receive is not conclusive as far as saying exactly because you know it said, I don't, you know, I want to understand the primary business. You do not intend to change that, and it says for sale vehicles or mobile homes. Well, you're not really selling vehicles are there because you are taking them in, and that's part of the business is taking them in and getting the titles. Or well, we I didn't just, understand that. I'm just questioning. No, 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 no. We just need to do a, a loan on the value other than the need of the property. So, you know, the trailer is some collateral that, um, you know, for us, it, it's a low risk loan. We'd be able to, you know, loan on that. Um, and, you know, in the event that we don't get paid back, that would be something that we could sell rather fast, um, which I, I believe kind of, you know, all ties in together. Well, I was kind of saying you do take a mobile home, you do take a car in with the, as far as the, uh, the business can. that you're running right now. Yes, we can. That's and, correct. And then sell it. I can see that, but the mobile home's not taken in the same way. It's purchased for sale. Yeah. Is that a difference? Well, it says here it's a repossession. 
could be. When, when, it, when is the next commission meeting? Next month, maybe? June. Not, not this commission. Oh. Mm -hmm. We just had one last week, so it'll be the second Thursday of each month. Well, our interpretation, it doesn't just affect the city of Beaverdam, if you understand what I'm saying. Excellent. There's, there's two communities involved, and there's a planning commission. Mm -hmm. and, and over the years, I don't, I, everybody understands, I know Larry understands, that, that the issue of mobile homes, placement of mobile homes in the communities has been an ongoing issue and is still an ongoing issue. So it would seem to me that, that before the city takes any action on it, that there'll be some understanding as between the two municipalities and the commission about how this is being interpreted. Because if, if we interpret it one way, that doesn't necessarily mean Hartford is going to interpret it the same way, or even the, that would be the feeling of the commission. Well, I think my understanding is it would have to come through your all's commission first anyway, wouldn't it? For well, this, uh, in this instance like this, I'm just asking clarification. Yeah. I couldn't find it in our ordinance to make it clear to me what to do. So I think that's going to take the uh, discussions with Hartford and, and and then the commission, all three, to determine that because it's something. I say ours may be different, but it technically would have to come through you all first and then come back to the city. So, should do you feel that they should be made aware of our feelings on it? Because I, I'm fine with it because I, Erica does keep her property looking nice, and so if since this is going to be a Beaverdam business which you guys may have different opinions. We do every now and then, that's, that's fine too. Um, should that be a part of going into the planning and zoning or let planning and zoning go through all of their... I think they need to go through theirs and with the city and then, first. Well, this yeah, is a little bit different in that most of, most of the other discussions and deals with mobile homes have been placing for people to live in. Yeah. yeah. This has absolutely nothing to do with that. This is just an extra item that a business wants to sell. When you do but, this, you have to think about, too, that you may have someone with another business. <laughs> well, say, this is, the, this this is the precedent you're setting for something down the road. Yeah, and I, you know, that might not be a suitable spot the for it, but I still couldn't turn them down because it's, all, you know, because it's been approved yeah. to be done. So and that makes it harder, too. That, that, that's the problem with the ordinance. So yeah, with the ordinance is broad, which it almost has to be right. to cover all of the various mm -hmm. uh, uh, subtopics. But mobile homes in particular, and I'm not saying this adverse to y'all's interest at all, but mobile homes has been an ongoing issue. Uh, For years. Keith's right. It's been primarily a concern about placement uh, on residential lots. But, but uh, it, it, it just seems to me that, that the one thing that's got to be true here is, however this is being interpreted, the commission's got to agree this is the way it is, and the municipalities have got to be on board. Uh, if, if, by example, the conclusion is we need to put broader or more restrictive language, either one, in it, it needs to be done uh, because I don't remember it coming up in this context before. I know we've had we've had mobile home uh, operations before, where the primary thing was the sale of mobile homes and used mobile homes, but that's not what we're talking about here. And and um, uh, it just seems to me there has there needs to be some clarity. Uh, with the commission and uh, among both communities, so that we're on the, everybody's on the same page. Yeah, I mean, we would want everybody on the same page. Yeah. Man, I, I'm like Sandy. I don't think there's a problem. I, I don't have a problem if y'all sell them, but again, I want the ordinance to read right because you don't want y'all to have trailers and this business to have trailers and that business and on up the you know everybody has some yeah. selling them, and then that would be a problem. And I, I think that's the big concern. Is. Yeah. So there would be stipulation that's why I say y'all get planning and zoning. Have them look at it and see what you think on it. Well, that you know, sometimes I'll bring things before the board, and they'll say, "Well, you read it. What do you think?" I don't want to think about this because it is, like I said, I think it needs to be taken on over by somebody no more than me. But again, you because have, there's well, a question I have about whether you have to have a license to sell mobile homes, like you do a car lot. And what kind of stipulations are all that? Is there a certain size of lot? 
How do you know? Well, mm -hmm. there are used cars and there's used cars, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself and out of my bound. My bound is to look at this and to uh, give you all the best advice I can give you, which is, uh, I think there needs to be clarity in what the, the ordinance says, the, and the two cities need to be on the same page. But, but one reason I feel that way is there are, as I say, there are used cars and there are used cars. There's used cars that look good mm -hmm. and used cars that don't look so good. There are mobile homes mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. look really good and mobile homes that don't look good. And we've well. had that issue so, so, before. <laughs> so whatever goes in here and that's needs to be understood among both communities and the commission, I think. Yeah. So and it's hard because we are we would have to vote on something that also Harper would have to agree to because they are part of the part of the uh, I think what we just need to do is to have discussions with the city of Hartford and with planning and zoning and get everybody on the same page and see where we're at and go from there. I agree with you. Thank you. Okay. So that you're not hanging in the air can do you think we can get that done to the next meeting so that they can get oh, yeah. the surely I mean y'all yeah. meet you said last Thursday of the month, right? No, second, 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 second Thursday. Second Thursday we met last week. But um, I can call them um, and get them to start revising them what I want them to research. You know, yeah, so hard to about 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 this is what I want them to talk and look at right. themselves before they ever come in. Call me. We'll, we'll get that process started immediately then. Okay, next item is approve the remodel invoice for the event build supply. Which we do this one separate just because it is under contract. It's you got a copy. You're Thank you all. Yeah. Should have been in your packet. No, I don't remember seeing that. Do you not have an invoice in the packet? I didn't have an invoice in my packet. She what? She said she put it in your box. I didn't have one in my box. Okay. No. Well, it's ninety-one thousand dollars. Oh, well, that's part of their contract. Okay. So it's just a, a formality we have to go through. I moved through the remodeling invoice. We have a motion second. Further discussion. Those in favor, signify by the aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Next item is to uh, put up Eddie Groves as a new appointee to the Code Enforcement Board. Make a motion to accept Eddie Groves to the Code Enforcement Board. Second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify by the aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Next item is annexation issue. Nathan? I. Wasn't sure, but I kind of thought maybe that was. Nathan has contacted us. Have you purchased the property? Yeah, I've got the uh, back Okay. He, uh, at some point, I don't even know when it was, there was a piece of property out on Taylor Mine Road taking into the city it. limits. Where's it at? That's my old stomping ground. Track three. This is in the city limits. Came up Taylor Mine Road, took this in the city limits. This is uh, uh, Evans has owned this, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's up on the curve. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. now I got you. It really goes up to Taylor Mine Road like yeah. this. Yeah, I got you. We had a discussion about that when we wanted the sewer up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How big is this? How big is the problem? It's a little over an acre and a half. He's wanted annexed into the city? No, they wanted him. Take it out of the city. And I, don't know. I would prefer to get it out of the city limits if it could be all possible. Because actually, you can see on the map right there, there's a plot of land that says Labor and Likens Jr. on there. Mm -hmm. That is actually where I live at right now. And it is owned by my granddad at the present moment. But I'm eventually going to either inherit it or buy it. Whatever I've got to do to get that property is family ground. And it actually jumped family ground to get that annexed in. Yeah, they went, up the, they went up the highway. <laughs> yeah, and I would assume, because everything's going to join there, I'd like to have everything out of city limits, if possible. And it's also got a graveyard on it. I don't know what the rules and stipulations are on a graveyard within city limits. I don't know if the city has to maintain a graveyard in city limits. No. They went the old Austin Cemetery, mm -hmm. and that's the uh, family gone. It's, you may have to get somebody, you know, some community that's a lot of, Committees that am I going to do that? But no, it, I didn't know. I, I was just kind of curious upon that. I'll give you a name. Do you know Ray McLean? No, I'll get you his phone number. That's who I would Jackie call. Jackie Barrett, either one. Huh? Or Jackie Barrett, either one. <coughs> well, I just raised one I talked Ray about a lot of times. There, there is a, a Ohio County Cemetery Committee, mm -hmm. I, and 
they don't necessarily take care of them, but they are, they're trying to uh, record all of them and track all of them, and they do help. I know they've gotten some funding and some help from inmate labor to keep stuff cleaned up at least yeah, ever so I often. Mean, and he's aware of that one because I know, I know a lady, a Wilma, yeah, is a relation, all that. So Now, are you wanting to – did I remember in the, our text back and forth, you wanted to put cattle on it? No, not really yeah. so much cattle, but just <laughs> more of them. If I was wanting to run some goats in the back of where I'm at right now, I don't think I'm going to get it in. Well, that's an acre. If I can include all that, there'd be two acres of run right there. But my, I, I'm going to be honest with you. My personal opinion is I would, I would be hard pressed to be willing to take it out. However, I would be more than happy to to work with you as far as I don't know if it's. Rezone the uh, agriculture or right waiver or something because we've got some other property in the city that has got, I mean, we got some with horses and stuff on it because they go through that process. My only, and the only reason I say that is because if anything ever, like the, the Brown property, if anybody or further back ever tried to decide to develop anything, there's no way for them to ever do it and annex into the city without, if this is taken out. Because it, it, everything has to adjoin now. I don't know when this was brought into the city. Do you, Mary, do you have any idea? Probably about 12 years ago. Yeah, yeah it's been several years. <clears throat> I don't think we've ever actually taken anything out of the city limits once it's in, but I don't see where there'd be any problem getting it rezoned to agriculture. What, uh, you just purchased it? Mm -hmm. I purchased it a couple months ago. Okay, what uh, was the use at the time that you purchased it? <clears throat> it's just yeah, a field. Well, I was going to say it was. When you purchased it, if it was being used for farm, you know, if it had some horses on it or uh, some type of a uh, tobacco, field that tobacco you base, something, yeah, anything like that. It, it ain't got no tobacco base on it. I mean, it, should, it was just a vacant lot whenever we bought it. And the reason why we bought the land is to keep people from building in behind us. Oh, I understand. I, I want to keep as much ground. And if the brown place ever come up for sale and I can get all of it, <laughs> I'm buying it too. I understand that. Are you talking about answer to uh, one lives up on the hill? Just no. Carl. Billy, Billy Carl. Billy oh. Carl. Oh, okay. I was just trying to see if it could have grandfathered in where he could use it for farm. Yeah, this lot right next to the I house where Fulton used to live, you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, it's right behind. They used, to act, they used to farm that. I would say we it could. It's all farm ground right there. Now, did they, what, they, they lease it out and farm it every year? It's been a long time since. Okay, I know they used to lease it. I mean, that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What what you, take, it, you take it out. Yeah. You, and you don't like what is it? You'll never get it. Probably residential, I tell you. Probably our water. Everything comes in our water. water. It, it would have come in that way probably uh, and if it had never been rezoned, it would automatically come in as our one. Mm. Unless they're. Uh, How hard used. would it be to zone it, agriculture? I don't know what's around it from just looking at that. That wouldn't be any problem. Well, oh, it, 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 he owns or, or on. There's two sides of it, and Brown has the other two sides of it, and I don't see them having an issue. Brown has got a tobacco base right yeah. here, and it's farmed and hay. Across the street is my granddad's place, and it's got uh, cornfield, beanfield on the yeah, other. Yeah, but it's only all city on one side, isn't it? What's your property you're talking about? It's one side. Just the street. Yeah. Just the street. Side. And the property itself. You know, if you have a agricultural and you decided you wanted to build a home on it or something you like that, you still, can still you can do that. that. Unless one of your neighbors just threw a real fit, you shouldn't have any problems with getting these on agriculture. You put goats or cows or whatever you want. I'm trying to find some way where you can County, have county, because county. Grandfather's in the city. The city comes right up the road. So it's just like it was used for fishing. Well, had a billy goat. It goes this way, doesn't it? Yeah, we had a billy goat. That was my point. I've got a garden on it. We could bring it in that and say, I'll take a cut of my head in the city in order to get this. Right over here. Because it was used for fishing. Yeah, that's what I was trying to find. I don't see any problem with this. 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 I don't see but it's probably. Do you want this whole area here taken out? As soon as the I don't think we put in the house. It's it's put in. No, it's we put this track number right there. We're planning on putting our homes on it. The original annex. It's 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 our it, one. it is on just yeah. two sides. Two and, uh, sides. Let's like see, these, these are county. Yeah. County, county, county. That's. Yeah, that house wasn't taken in. That's yeah. That's all county. This is all the city. Yeah. So they're going to have some kind of farm. They could rezone it. I don't think it'd be any problem. I don't mean so. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Well, just the one neighbor and I. Billy no. Carl's not going to object. He's not going to object to it. <coughs> Didn't resolve. You won't get any objection. And to see, it. the reason we don't want you to take it out of the city because, like he said, if somebody on the other side of you decided, hey, we want to be in the city, 
still not going to affect you because you're going to still be zoned agriculture, but they can get in the city and be zoned residential. Okay. Now, I've got a question for this then. If we do that, can I run a water line up there and not have sewer if it's zoned agriculture? Yeah, you can have water. Water and sewer has nothing to do with yeah. it. Yeah, it's nothing to do with it, yeah. Okay. That's the, my oh. biggest thing is I want to be able to use the you, ground, you know, as I see fit, right. and, sure. I, and I'm restricted right you're, now. You're not wanting on sewer. No. Yeah. You don't have to. Okay. Because you got enough ground out there. Yeah, and the water, you could say you're using that for your agriculture. Yeah, exactly. That's it. And, and then, I, don't, I don't have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. But that's what I would do. It would be the quickest and... You want it resolved, or you want to just let yeah. it say it's Well, I, I think it's just being well. I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with the grandfather. We'll just say it's grandfather. Okay. Because that's fair enough. Can we do that, Nancy? Yes, because if it's an empty lot, and he says that they used it for fescue, or they had garden on it, or anything well, like that, it's that a lot it trouble, then mm -hmm. it would continue the use until mm -hmm. somebody went in and, and um, well, did something different with it. Let's just change it then. Let's just say it was agriculture. I would say leave it. I think they leave it, just go ahead and farm leave on it. Leave it in the city that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be better for everybody involved because it's not going to affect you anyway, but it could affect us down the road. Because if somebody comes in you and they say, we want a residential, and you're not in the city, we're going to have to annex you too. And then it becomes a hassle. <laughs> Once you go on further down the road. Right. If they go, and, and I know that we may never go down the road, but I'm just saying. It, it is a hassle sometimes to annex. It's even Very more of a ha hassle to de yeah. yeah. And and one advantage that Nathan's got, actually, he can continue to use it, do what he wants to, and he's a young fellow. He can't, he can't fathom that 30, 40 years down the road, it might be hugely beneficial to be in the city. Yeah. Uh, so de-annexing is a, is, a, is a big deal. So if we can keep it in the city and let him... I mean, yeah. I understand that you guys ain't gonna let me take it out. Yeah, no, but I mean, are you okay with turning it over to agriculture? It yeah, makes a lot that's, easier for you. Yeah, that's fine. That's. If you come into the office, I, instead of making go through a rezone, I just if you can do a grandpa, I'd much rather do I that. Yeah. We wrote up a letter, and you come in and sign it, and then every year I'll drive by and see, well, he's still farming, he's still got that for fescue or whatever. And like I said, you, that wouldn't stop you from putting from putting a home on it because on an agricultural piece, you can't have a home on it. Okay, okay. so I could build a home later on it. And oh yeah. If I decide to build a home there, and it still would not change my usage. No, no. right. Okay. Wouldn't touch. But you have to use it for a farm. That's so I can say yes. Well. Just the empty field can take care of that. And a row of corn. I mean, you know, yeah, it's like small. Because that's grass. Yeah, fescue and grass take so care of it. So. Just call me and, uh, okay. and we'll write a paper so often I'll drive by and look and see, and I'll just note it. Well, you can every and, year and say And we have a few others that are in the same situation, and that's what she does. Yeah. I mean, it's not a problem with us. Okay. I mean... I just don't want to get R1 because I've been I've been doing a lot of research. There's a lot of restrictions on R1 that I, it's, it's not well, going to be fixable well, for me. Right. With what I've got. Well, he doesn't. Well, you're still going to be R1, but we're going to grandfather the, the agriculture, agriculture, agriculture use part of it in. So it doesn't affect you. Yeah. 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 Come back and see me. <laughs> uh, do you have contact information directly? Yes. Clear as mud. Hmm? It's a clear as mud. <laughs> oh, that it was an easy one. Took a while to that realize was easy. who they were, but they both used to attend the daycare that I owned. <laughs> I kept sitting here <laughs> looking, trying to figure them out, and I was like, hey, I know Does that her. make you hey, feel old, Sandy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because okay. yeah, they were probably like three or four. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> Long time ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, well, call in the morning at that point in the afternoon, and uh, I'll stay in late, you know, after hours at work or whatever it is, so that you want to take off work. Okay, I'll just give you a call tomorrow. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. No problem. You want to, you need this spot? Thank you, guys. Thanks. Okay. This year, we'll start with you. Uh, if you are going to go to the closed session, could you talk about it? It doesn't have been out maybe once you go all the way through. Just kind of give some details about the concert, how many of you all think there were, the hitting issues, arrests, or 
anything like that. Well, I saw on Facebook there was an arrest, but I wasn't aware of an arrest. Yeah, I saw <laughs> there, that. Was, I there was no arrest, but... I wondered from the source. <laughs> Did they know, or... So, no. So there, was, there wasn't any arrest? Am I right? There was no arrest? Got they, well, they but... They weren't arrested. Uh, what was the... Do you have an idea what the final total was? We're estimating about 4,200. 42 yeah. to 4,300. Uh, and no... No issues security-wise or anything? Nothing? It's not... We didn't appear. Not really. Uh, we've got some kinks to work out yeah. for yeah. one that size, but we anticipated that. Uh, I saw several... on. I don't know, it could have just been blown up, but the beer ran out awful quick, or was running We out. didn't run out of beer. I don't know okay. that it ran out awful quick. They just drank a whole lot. <laughs> the line got very long. Well, maybe they thought that, that, that it was. I saw several that said, you know, John Prine hasn't even come on stage, and they're running out of beer or something like that. They could have just been high. And, and well, they did run out of margaritas really early. And I will say Paul was right that Budweiser did not give us credit because Budweiser was way low on where they thought we should be. And Paul fussed at them and they brought it up. They, they actually tripled it. From what they had Friday morning, they tripled, more than tripled. And we yeah, ran tripled. out still. So well, but we didn't run out. That's just it. We went and got more. We got more. I know, but we that needs to be clarified. So we don't. Uh, we didn't run out. The new concession yeah. was great. It was great. Larry, you can probably talk more about that than anybody. No, I don't want to talk about the concession no more. He was busy. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, I saw, it was I saw several nice. pictures and and it looked like there were lines all around it, so it looked like you were getting your use out of it. We, we designed, had gentlemen design handrails to kind of herd people in and out, and I think we're going to do the same on the beer. Yes, we are. Uh, it made it so much better for us, so. Well, like I said, we got some kinks to work out. Uh, overall, I was pretty pleased with how things work, went. We uh, tried something different with the level, ticket levels and the, the gold circle seating and the VIP seating and, and there were some people that didn't much like that I had but I had some people said they got in there and they bought VIP when they got there they saw that hillside looked really good and they thought they could see better so they moved up to the hillside uh, I heard some some people complain and that's what I don't understand you go on Facebook social media some people say well they couldn't hear very good up there then the very next thing would be best sound we've ever heard at a concert so I'm like I don't know which one of y'all was drunk <laughs> obviously not the one that was hearing it because they enjoy it so uh, uh, did the, the artist have anything to say about the Loved it. Too? Absolutely loved it. Prine, because I was, I, Tracy and I went backstage and met Prine right after the show and met him and spoke with him and his wife for a few minutes and then I was with him again later that night with Heath on the bus eating birthday cake. And they just couldn't get over the fact of what we had in Beaverdam. And of course you heard Matt Jones even talking about Kate and of course he wasn't even sure where Beaverdam was. But, uh, and I don't listen to him a lot, but he tends to not be a very complimentary person from what I've heard. Oh. So I thought he was extremely well, complimentary. Like yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. He's a lawyer. He's a lawyer. Well, he he's and he's a Kentucky fan, so yeah. I'm, okay. we're, he and I are good. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, well, I, I got mean, it you heard him mention, he said that Tyler Childers tweeted out that was probably the best night of his life because he got to sing Paradise with the... Uh, John Prime. John Prime. Well, even, even Prime's wife told us this was one of the largest crowds they performed to. They don't go to big arenas and stuff. That's mm. generally not where they go. Mm. I and that's the biggest crowd they have on this tour. We're waiting right now, and I can't say a whole lot, but there, we may have another announcement to come from this Brian concert. Nothing about them coming back. I've already heard they're coming back next year. But <laughs> some for things. This year? No. Or for next year. For, well, for next year, we're not. We didn't, we're not even worried about next year yet. But, well, but some so for this year, some things we're working on right now that they may have an announcement to make. This year. Mm -hmm. Not for a show, but just for something for the community. I oh, think. Okay. Just, right. I think that will show how much they thought of the community uh, and, the, and the venue. Dustin, do you have any questions? I'm pretty good. Uh, I have one more, but we'll keep going. I forgot what it was. We got to talk about everything else. I forgot what. It was just one thing. I just know I followed along on social media, and I saw way more. Good things. And it, historically, if you think about it on social media, the ones who had a real good time are the ones, not the ones who usually go post. The only ones that post are the ones who have a gripe. And we had one guy that had a gripe to the point we almost had an issue. Uh, he grabbed me one more time and he was going to have a real issue. Uh, but, and he's been on Facebook 
and I don't know what more we could have done. He kept telling me, he said, I know I'm drunk, but I'm like, yeah, but. Uh, That's no excuse. But, we, but that was, to my knowledge, really the only issue that could have got out, could have got out of hand. Won't feel the same. But uh, like I said, we had all kinds of compliments on there. The the management teams really liked it. Uh, of course, Tyler Childers is coming back in August, and he's excited because he gets to bring his whole band, and they're really excited about what they get to do and the and potential they have for that concert. <laughs> And the next show is Oak, Oak Ridge, right? Oak Ridge. And then what is that, two weeks? June 1st. June 1st. Friday night. Yeah. That one I'll probably be at, with or without us. And it's, I will say, Larry didn't want to comment too much on the on the new building. It helps. There's a lot more room. It's a lot easier access. We get the kinks worked out on the sales of the beer and a couple of other things. Listen, it's it's going to be a great venue. And like I said, it's our first. We had never had a concert that size before. Yeah. And just the small little kinks we had, we can fix those. There wasn't anything major I saw happen. Hey, people talking about they were impressed with the way the crowd control, the traffic, uh, going out. Y'all what about forty-five minutes, fifty minutes? Had everybody out? Because it was almost as quick as one of the smaller concerts. And yeah, I was. Yeah, I wonder if y'all was going to do that out back, back back way. Did y'all use that for parking? That backfield. Mm -hmm. back back I sat in my car for about thirty minutes before I got out, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> I was I was in a bad spot, but it was. Well, but again. But y'all did get them out. Once I got in the line, I actually moved out. It wasn't that bad. Um, are you guys still doing the gold circle? Part for all the concerts, the different ticket levels? Like Not that? all of them. We're doing it for this one. We did it for this one. We're doing it for the 80s in July concert. I thought you did and it for the Ridge Boys, too. No. Mm -hmm. No, and we're doing it for Lee right. Bryce right. and for Turnpike Troubadour in September. Uh, that was something new, but that was something. And they also catered to them, I don't know, yeah. you know, at the table, so that was, they had menus. That was I never cool. heard of the Gold Surf thing, but I guess that's something. This was first show we've ever done it. Mm. But I guess it's something that in the past has been done. I mean, it wasn't like he invented, it wasn't like he invented something. It's, oh, no, we just invented, we just came up. I don't know how the Golden Circle name even came up. But. Well, I mean, I heard, I listened to a podcast the other day. And they were talking about the Golden Circle section of the crowd. So I guess it's. And a lot of that depends. Like for the 80s show, it's not going to be in the front where this one was. It's going to kind of be on both corners and sides of the stage because of the mosh pit they want for the 80, 80s band. Well, they did mention, uh, I don't know if John mentioned Skid Row, the, the, yeah. the Shannon, their DJ up there. So Skid Row's down there. So you all go see him. So. Well, I, I know there was some concern, and some people commented on standing in line to get in the gate and didn't get to see all of Childers. I was at the gate. Childers was supposed to go on at 7 o'clock, and he was a little late going on because there was a lot going on. But at 7.05, I started asking people as they were coming in and having their tickets scanned how long they'd been in line, and I was getting 15, maybe 20 minutes. So I come back to it, and, and, and Joe Beth was a little concerned. We've got all these people, and they're going to miss it. And I'm like, well, you know, you can't expect to come to any kind of concert and park your car and then expect to get in and seated and your refreshments and sit down and wait for the first song in 15 minutes. If you do, you're never going to make it. So I can't, I can't be disappointed in the way that worked. Now, if they'd come up and tell me we was in there for 45 minutes to an hour at 7 o'clock, I'd have concern. going to be a lot of people for the most part if you don't to be there by the time the doors open, you can expect to be waiting. Mm -hmm. so. well, we thought of some ideas in the ID tent that might speed things along a little bit mm -hmm. too. I think we've talked, we've probably talked about some of those because we've got several uh, things and we're going to have a meeting tomorrow to kind of. I think people kind of think that one, once you all have decided you're doing something, that you're never going to adapt or modify things to make anything easier. It's, well, that's the way they're doing it, but. Of course, you've got to, you know, your biggest crowd, you're going to find some things that maybe you hadn't seen in the past that you can use going forward to make everything better. Well, for example, one thing, one problem we had, and we're going to, it's just going to take some more people acting as ushers, when they would come in for the general admission and they come up this side and get right above the wall, they just stop right there. This whole half the hillside was empty and this one was packed mm -hmm. because they just, it's kind of like when they come into the 
parking lot at the ball the ball field. We're going to yeah. first park mm -hmm. the first parking lot, and then we're going to start parking up in the grass and up inside the field instead of, instead of driving around entrances. another 50 or 60 feet. To... So, do you think you said around 4,200? Do you could it have? Could you put more in there? Oh yeah. You've gotten five. Well, you got over five. I said because of the volunteers. <laughs> I expected. <laughs> <laughs> I expected we had several, we had several volunteers. I told Paul I thought probably with the volunteers and everything it was about forty four fifty because I figured we had two hundred fifty volunteers. Yeah, I heard someone said that they all kind of sat over on one side of the. And I thought well maybe the, the screen was up there so I couldn't figure it out. But if if people were just walking and they were just all lining up on one side, it's just like if everybody came in here and you came in that door and you sat there. Well, that means the next person sat there, 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 and there, and then they start coming around back here while that whole back corner is empty. Yeah, that's exactly what. Well, I said, well, yeah, and I don't know how to. I just that just yeah, I mean, floors you, me. But. You'd almost have to have ushers just kind of like you do out in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. You wave the cars through. That was not something we really anticipated on that hillside like that. Yeah, you people I mean, well, you, you can see it. it yeah. You know, on the flat part down there, we've had that trouble before where they come in and start and not go on around. But on the hillside, you can well, see when you're walking in, you see this whole empty hillside and you stop right here. <laughs> there, well, there wasn't a place to sit with nobody around you. What about the place where nobody was sitting? Oh, they there. eventually got over there. Oh, okay. But it was, it was spar. I mean, it was still sparse. You could have gotten... We got another thousand in there, couldn't we? Easily. <laughs> How many to figure out? So they could get to the beverage area faster? Probably. How many to figure out who we can get in here? Well, that's been brought up too. And I told them next time I go up to South Bend to a football game, I'm going to tell Notre Dame they have to put their concession stand by my seat because I don't want to walk. <laughs> well, I'm glad everything uh, went well and you had a good crowd. I'm shocked. I'm, I'm like, I'm like Barry and maybe some of the police force I'm ready for five and six thousand. Mm. We expect you to be there working. <laughs> With us. Yeah. You're a volunteer. I'm sitting and watching the we, we just <laughs> volunteered you to help. So you're ready. I'm going to be out of town. I just remember. <laughs> Chris, can you hear me? Uh, the whole thing, talking about the traffic on there, one of the things that kind of hurt us there was a semi truck with a little boy and a large estimate that broke down right there in front of the Baptist church. I didn't even know that until yesterday afternoon. <laughs> Oh, I noticed that they were parked probably down here on Main Street, and then I saw them because I went through here. I don't know about nine thirty. Was there any on this parking lot? I don't know. I, I went through they the didn't... park, so I didn't even look in here. But I know they were up and down the streets, and then street the, you know over by railroad tracks, and then the, about the farthest I saw them, was the Beaver Dam Park or Beaver Dam Baptist Church parking lot was pretty full. Cool. And the only thing I kind of noticed is it was really dark, and I was like, you know, this could be if someone wanted to come in here and try to knock a few windows out and look for stuff. But uh, I was riding around. Well, I wondered. I kind of figured you all were probably patrolling around otherwise. But uh, no, I noticed there were a lot of cars, and, I, and the whole place was full. Of like they had their tickets, you know what you were going to have. Yeah, and like I said, I still don't know what the back parking lot had. And it was uh, from the tree line there where your little triangle piece is, you are talking about, all the way to the edge of the property, over half the field. It was only about half of it was was used, so. How did people know to go back there? And park? Oh, we, they built a road we, we built a road. Down. But I mean, how did... Fire department. Right? They were driving traffic. We, we, we had people the parking them. I gotcha. I'm following you now. Yeah. I was thinking coming in off of Bruce School Road. I'm thinking how do you no. get oh. Joe from Montana to They all came through the park. Yeah, yeah. There was one guy from out of state. I'm picturing it now. And he's like, How do I get that theater? The, the, my app is Sam. I'm here. I said, We are right there. Just go over to the parking. And he went over and didn't have to wait in line you know, from 231 in. So, so uh, how many do you reckon you can park in that field? Only four or five hundred pretty easy. I, yeah, oh yeah. yeah I believe we can get four fifty in there. That would definitely for sure. take a little burden off of the other parking lot and have them park up in there. But you know, you we go to Cincinnati Red Ball games, we're in a hotel, we gotta walk ten blocks or more to get to the park. Mm -hmm. I mean we squeeze them in the grass. Walking to a concert is part of going to a concert. Well, oh, and the explain that to some of the people around. What the interesting part was of all the people we talked to that night, the only ones that complained about the parking have to walk were the people that lived here. <laughs> 
I had a lot of people from out of town talk. And then I had some people come up and said, that was a really great idea where you emailed us the map that showed where different parking places were at. Yeah. And then I had some that said, well, we never got the email. And then one guy came back and he said, I have to apologize to you. I went back and looked, and I did get one. I just didn't open it. We went to a Redskins and parked in Kentucky. Oh, I do that every time. <laughs> we crossed the bridge. I mean, you go to a concert in the Yum Center, there's mm -hmm. no parking. Mm -hmm. And you always, you just have to look to find a garage. Or find somebody to drop you off and come well, back and The Ford Center in Evansville, you park all over downtown Evansville. You're, yeah. you're a good gosh, long way away from the venue. Parking was so like I say, the, the people who came from out of town that go to concert, they had, nope. I didn't have any, hear any issues with them from And they were park. from everywhere too. Well, good. That's what 40 we're states and 102 or three Kentucky counties. Australia and Canada. Yeah, I saw that. And Virginia has the prettiest license. Their driver's license are lavender. <laughs> well, I know Debbie was talking about Luttrell. Somebody seen the going. They handed her a passport for their ID. Yeah, I have one lady with a passport also. Longer than upward. Tony, if you or Mike would be available tomorrow night, five fifteen, we're gonna have a little meeting right here, and, and Chris and with the, the parking. Just while well, it's still kind of pressing on anything, we might need to think about doing the. Of course, the next concert won't be this big, but we've got another one coming up in July, and we want to be ready for it. So, Dust? <coughs> Dust? Yeah. 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 Nancy, you have anything else? No. Thank you all for listening to me. Okay. Keith? Uh, I've got maybe one thing that's maybe a question for AB. We've had some two or three times in the last two or three rare years, we've had problems with somebody that has some sort of sewage problem or whatever, and it like a uh, uh, stopped up sewer that they don't clean out or whatever, and it's actually had sewage running over on other people's property. And we had, it's, we've had a terrible time getting anything done about it. Uh, the health departments, if, I don't think they'll do anything anymore. Uh, I just wondered, can we modify our ordinance some to where if there is a problem and it's not fixed, we can turn their water off? Um, help me, the sewage is coming from here. Like your property, you're here and I'm here, and your sewage backs up and it starts running over into my property. I understand that. We're talking about people that it's not. It's, you're not talking about a leak from 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 our system. No, an individual say they have a bad sewer line and it's oozing over on their next door neighbors, and the next door neighbor wants something done about it, and you call the health department and they fail to do anything. Yeah, but it's not it's not it's not why it's not part of the system that the city is responsible. It's not a city for issue really. Is that what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well first of all I think you can probably um, take a complaint if in fact they're spilling over onto your property and, and you have uh, complained and you don't know anything about it. Actually, you might be able to take a criminal complaint depending on exactly what's happening. Code enforcement officer said it says that it's not in his field that he don't mess with it. Well, it, so. depends, on, it depends on what the... I don't know whether it's in the code or not. It certainly could be included in the code if you choose to include it in the code. But, but uh, it, the health department is, is the other location. And then thirdly, you've got a civil action you can file against them. If necessary, to clean it up. It's it's in effect. It's not. It's, it's it is a nuisance uh, at best. So there's if it's not in the code enforcement ordinance, and you wanted to put it, you could. Secondly, I mean, you certainly have a civil <coughs> and I don't. I don't. I can't speak for it. I have no idea what the health department would do, but I would assume because it clearly is a health issue. That that if they're not doing something, they should. Well, there's a there's a two residences on Second Street, and the sewer from the one residence is running over into the other residence. That's been going on for two or three years. I believe we've called the health department several times down there. Yeah. Yep. They don't. I thought you had somebody. I called the Division of Water. My inspector was in town. He went there and talked to them and, and resolved the problem. But I'm just, I'm assuming it's come back. The same problem come back. Same place. Was their collection line broken? I mean. Ours it's, didn't stop it up to, it's not the clay, it's a great water. He, he's, got, he's got a, a line going out taking his washing machine water out and dumping it across the other property. I don't think you can do that in town anymore. Well, well, let, let me ask a couple of questions. 
They don't smell like they, they're on the <laughs> they're on the city sewer. Right. Is that correct? Yeah. So they're they're paying for city sewer services, and they're on city water. Right. Is that correct? But they're still putting their gray water out in the yard. I didn't think we could do but that. you think it's more than gray water? It, it smells a whole lot worse than any gray water. Well, it from. would seem it would seem to me that 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 you could pass. So if you, we don't already have one, you could pass an ordinance that that would allow in circumstances where. Uh, they are spilling sewage uh, through their own failure to ma maintain and it continues for whatever period of time after they're notified that you can cut their services off, both. Yeah. Well, this doesn't happen very often, but it, there's usually one ongoing case all the time on it and we have trouble getting anything done about it. Well, I, 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 I think you could put an ordinance in place where you can cut their services off. I think it, it makes perfect rental? sense. That's probably the simplest no. solution. No. Well, it's oh. running over into a rental, okay. but it's not, okay. not coming from a rental. Because I thought it was a rental. If you get the services off, it's going to... You want me to draft an ordinance? Please. Because yeah. I think we need to do something. I can't understand why it doesn't fall into code enforcement. It's a nuisance. Uh, after everything else failed, we called him and he said, that's Larry's problem. You don't do water and food. Stop putting the water in the I okay. Do you have anything else? No. Sandy. Just a couple of ditches. And do you know where Bobby Lindsay lives on Ridgecrest? Okay. You can look up his address though. And if you don't care to drive by, just go and check it out. I have not had the chance to and was going to before I came to the meeting tonight, but he's got some ditch problems there. I think it's probably about like the other ditch problems that we have in town. We just got a bunch of old ditches and Does he live up on our end of Ridgecrest? Mm-hmm. Okay, it's across from David Jarvis. Somewhere in there. One of those houses. Next to Webb Harris. And then the tile in there by Stephanie Sanford's. Um, I talked to her daughter the other day and I think they're getting ready to move in there with her mom and she said the ground is just eroding away. And I thought you might just check that out. And where you know where Stephanie lives there on, is it Barnes? The corner. 222 Barnes. For a different reason, though. The ditch of the roading? Yeah. It's, there, there was a, the tile hadn't been there that long, and then I think it was, it was that big dip that I kept on saying. <laughs> If we made the dip, we need to fix it back. Remember that one? Yeah. I thought you might just check it out and see if there are any solutions there. Rita is coming and going. She lives in Mount Washington, but told me that she's going to be moving there with her mom. And I'll try to look at them too, Larry, or you can call me and we can meet there sometime. Or Whatever, I didn't want to bug you with all the concert stuff that was going on because I figured you would ignore me. <laughs> That's it. Nothing but some code enforcement issues. I'm going to get with Chris if I pass along to uh, Michael. So the yard's already getting up and passing oh, these. 743 West 3rd. 743 right across from me. I've been told him once last year. Did that lady pass away or something? That lived she died, there? but she got somebody's over cleaning out the carport. Somebody cleans the house out, but they don't care anything about the yard. I think a citation's was, already been sent. Oh, what did good. Paul, oh, what did you say about? I don't wait for the meeting. I think, that they I think a, a citation's already been sent. Yeah, and I think that is going to go into foreclosure also. Well, that'll mean the people. Uh, there got to be some errors there, don't they? Yes. They shall take care of the property. But it's. I've already called about it because I passed it. Yeah, that's what driving every morning. I can see a little bit now, so I saw how tall it was. <laughs> okay. someone caught the street light between Fort on um, Fort and Lafayette's out. It's only, and that's really the only one I know around. And the only reason I have stuff right here. You seen Larry? Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Go ahead. But it, at four o'clock in the morning, there's not much to do. You look, check out which street lights aren't burning. So. Uh, that's that's really the only thing I have other than I do want to applaud the police and the and the fire for what they did at the concert though and I did a great job. They really did.
That lady driving the great big limo said, even y'all's police are nice. <laughs> Who was that? I saw that that thing was Illinois. unbelievable. She drives How did up. they get that in there? She drove. Well, I helped her back it up because I was leaving and she was trying to back. It and was so I was like, do you need help? Uh, um, that's the biggest limo I ever saw. I saw it leaving one for a week going to she, Illinois. She well, it's actually, they were eating Mexican yeah. earlier in the we night. Figured it, something like she that. She drives a concert. school bus for Robertson County. But that was out of the, the those limos were out of um, Bowling Green, I think. She said she does that just weekends and stuff. Well, this one was as long as from here to yeah. It's she tell me how many feet shorter it is in the school bus she drives every day. It looked like it lasted forever. Well, I know we ate at dinner at one of the restaurants Friday or Saturday afternoon in Ash, and she said they were swamped Friday night, and most of the people from out of town because they kept saying, "Okay, what's your specialty?" I know the pizza place down here was very busy. I think yeah. Twin Lakes was very busy, and I knew Deidre was. Pretty busy, and I don't know about so the one on Elsie Cafe was or Rodney's whatever. Yeah, that's they that's could. where I, I was Saturday at. Morning, and they were just. And they said they were swamped. So I'm yeah. curious to see. Restaurant tax. Yeah, how that would. I mean. Oh. How much it's been, well, yeah, I mean, it's tourism. I, I did think, I wanted to know, just that one night, what it did. It's I wish there was a way to do to that. Do that. Well, I'd like to see the restaurant tax for the month of, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I thought about two, man. That's it, though. I got one thing, you know, Larry. Uh, and A.V., you may tell me we don't want to even tackle this, but we do have a copy of an ordinance from Alexandria, Kentucky. But I've noticed, and Larry and I talked about it, if you drive up Main Street especially, People go and mow their yards and keep them all nice and neat, but that little strip between the sidewalk and the curb is getting knee high. They won't mow them. Why is that? They got used to ripping his. Yeah, they got. That's. The, I, I did have a complaint about that, but I just kind of that he complained about that well, last year, so I didn't say anything. This is an ordinance where, and I haven't read it all. And I haven't read it. AV basically says that you're, the homeowner is responsible for keeping that trim just like it is his yard. I really thought we already—I thought we already had it, to be honest with you. But Mary can't find anything. I think in there. people just did it about curves to keep their yard pretty till rip started, and then now they up mm -hmm. that city and county take care of it. But I can't believe that, that. I can't. I can't imagine living there and letting that twelve mm -hmm. inches grow up. Well, I just older we get, the more we realize that a lot of people do right think right that's stupid. Is it so? Yeah, that's part of the city right away. Uh, it's, it's state property. It's state right away, right there. But technically, state right away, if you look at it, it goes up, way up in the middle of their front, a lot of them's front yeah, yards. the sidewalk, usually. Well, of course, the problem with the ordinance is can, can you require somebody to maintain property that's not theirs? I, I think it's a good idea. I can't imagine that you wouldn't mow it if you're mowing I think your yard. Decent to you mow because it. it's right in front of your property. Yeah. But the more fundamental question is can you require somebody to maintain what's not theirs. Well, that's why we got that from another city for you to look at. <laughs> so I don't, ex I don't expect to do any action tonight. It's just something that... Yeah, you can do, well, I don't want to rip point not to Well, no, but... He said he don't let us know next meeting. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't, wasn't expecting tonight, but I just we were trying to get some information together. Larry, do you have anything? Uh, yeah, I got a couple things for the session. Uh, I, I know most of the visibility at the park on the concert was was police presence, fire department getting in and out, but behind the scenes, uh, we worked well over 100 hours overtime prepping for this event. The girls working in the office taking calls, to going and pick up supplies for us. So I think they are, need to be in the conversation as this event going on very well. Mm -hmm. I know you made a comment, police and fire, they done a great job. They did, but, but, and, I, and I forgot they came but, to work there. I, I, I did see them. You know, it, we, we, we done everything we could with Joe Beth. She done a great job. It was a huge success, and it was a total team collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I just don't want to leave. leave yeah, you're right. I, I apologize well. for not including you. Know, you. My, guys, my guys stayed there at 3.30 Saturday morning, tearing down, come back at 7 to finish picking up trash. And get ready for an 18-team yeah. baseball tournament yeah. that was going on at the park. Wow. So, you know, wow. it, it, it was... It was it was a long week. That's why the crowd needs to be 3,000 or less. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of trash, what happened to all the beer cans? I let my guys pick them up and sell them. Well, I started saying they're <laughs> shame. Oh, oh, oh I, I, I went in there Saturday morning and told them the same thing. I said, if y'all were just good. sell them. He said, I'm we just drove, drove two cans, one for garbage, one for the for the aluminum. I'm like, hey, yeah. awesome, pick up, let's I'm go. I'm happy to hear that because I want stuff recycled. Uh, everything 
went off as, as well as as we had hoped. Uh, but I, you know, I, I really think the 4200 is a little pushing us a little bit. I mean, we, we stopped pretty much everything we were doing all week long. To, to well, but it won't be quite as much from the next one because you all were doing a lot of stuff on the amphitheater. Can I get that right? You all were doing a lot of stuff trying to get the concession stand finished and, you know, we were still moving coolers in the week before yes, and a lot of stuff that's of not going to happen We the were next moving time. stuff in the day of. I mean, now, I'm talking about, Larry and I moved a bunch of stuff that morning. I'm talking about hardware equipment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, was, it was a push. I mean, it was... Uh, I don't want to go back there again. <laughs> I mean, the guy was there the mo Friday morning trimming out the post on the front porch of the uh, he was, he was concession there. stand. Yeah, he left about 3 o'clock. Oh, well, yeah. I was there, but I don't know when he left. Well, the first big one, the next one's going to be easier. You know what to do. You get it all together. It gets easier as time goes. Can you just feel, though, like a, a weight lifted off your shoulders and a sense of accomplishment? No, I was called at 6 o'clock. We was moving stuff back to the baseball tournament. <laughs> and, 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 I mean, after all, <laughs> Sunday, did you feel good Sunday? He didn't feel anything tired. Sunday. I'm still tired. Uh, one issue that I have is uh, Beaver Ram Housing Authority. They are supposed to be paying something you can call it in lieu of taxes that they have not paid the last two years. Uh, they had always paid $65, $6,600 a year. I'm, I think that Amy had said they had a new attorney or a new financial guy. He'd run some numbers. He said they should be paying, I think she said, 9200 and they still have not paid, so they are two years behind. We need to get this caught up. I don't know if it's something we need to draft a letter or what, but... Remind me, we'll start with the phone call first, okay. if that's okay with everybody. Just, I didn't realize. I knew we'd had problems once before, but I didn't. Yeah. I thought it had all been kept current since Do you then. know if there's been any contact made to this office? Yes. Okay. Yes. But they, they keep on thinking they don't have to pay taxes because they're part of the city. Well, their, their financial guy had said, well, you should be paying 9200 or whatever. And they still haven't paid what they normally pay with 65. So uh, it's become, it's, it's become a, an issue. Uh, Hickory Drive, we talked about that. Chris Smith got with, back with me today to blacktop, re blacktop the street with base and everything. Uh, almost $76,000. <clears> that is. Two inches of base, inch of leveling, inch of surface. So that is in the budget too. It is. I put I put it in there. You and I had talked about it. Right. And well, we had a few salt places in the course. Of the, <laughs> be the gravel was not as thick as it should have been, in you know the base and, and the surface or whatnot. But uh, we we dug some salt places out and, and it helped. And of course this winter that we had with all the rain and whatnot, mm -hmm. uh, it created more of an issue. So we had thought about going for just patching, but I didn't want to waste the money. So we, I, I felt that it'd be better if we just go in there and, and bite the bullet. And okay, because that was the last that you and I talked about. Does, does water stand around there, Larry? In the ditches and stuff? This huh? It will stand in there. This then your, your road will never fix it, don't matter how much base you put down. If you can't get the water away from underneath the road, the road will not last, and there's nothing you can do to fix it. Well, it, and a typical season does it. It was not prepared correctly. Well, that's what I say. But you have to get the water away from it. It's ditched pretty good on. Yeah. Isn't that where it floods? I thought that's where that woman was complaining about a flood was Hickory Drive. Oh, this, this, this is down a new Hickory Drive. That's the yeah. Cherry Lane back on Main Street. Yeah. Okay. You know, there's supposed to be six inches of gravel, or maybe two. And, and some, something else that, that hurts that area is on a new subdivision, you go in, you spend all this money on and, on prepping the street, mm -hmm. and then you build a house and a concrete truck, truck drives mm -hmm. up to the edge of the curb, and it breaks it off, mm -hmm. and it just keeps on, keeps on. Is there, can we have them bond the road when they build a house? Can they not be bonded? I thought if it was a subdivision development, there was, there was some kind of bonding procedure for it. Your subdivider is supposed to be bonded to get the streets in correctly before you all take them. You know the streets themselves. So well, we we should we should never take a street into a subdivision done 100 percent. Because it's it's it's, mm -hmm. it's an issue. Because that was part of what you had. Well, I know when because I know the ones the two we did was I think you took them in, but we uh, we had it set up where we had to come in and blacktop them before you finalized. Because we went on gravel for. Yeah. I know when they had bonded first roads for six the, eight months. Bonded roads for the coal mines. When they got done with their 
all their work. They closed the mine. They did their reclamation, and then they fixed the road. That was the last thing they did was fix the road because the county would not take it over or the city or whatever it was involved with would not take it over until they were guaranteed no more coal trucks were going to be hauling on it, period. And that's kind of what you need to do with subdivision until there's no, not going to be any more concrete trucks going in there or one or two is not going to kill it, but you have 10 or 12 going in there every summer, you're going to damage that, that road. It don't matter what you kind of road you got. It's a lot of weight put and being put right in the center yes. of that road. You can require whatever you want to require, but once once it's dedicated, and then once the city ours. accepts it, mm -hmm. it's it's ours. Mm -hmm. It's the city's. Well, I, I want to hit it. That's included in the budget, so you know to, to go in. And when are you thinking that the work will be done? Chris told me they was going to be back in uh, first of June. He said they could do the work first of June and bill us come June come July one, which will be in the next fiscal year. So I, I've got a word with the advisor for it. Uh, that's all I have. Okay. Hey, do you have anything before we go into the I have one matter. Uh, we've already discussed this, and Mayor, I already showed you this. Just pass those down. That that's the short amendment that we made to the police policy. I've already given it to the clerk to be uh, to be added relative to the uh, officers yeah. taking one, one, one copy. Let me see. Our, the vehicles out of county. Y'all stick back there. Okay. I, think, I thought I had two sheets too, but I didn't. There's that one. Okay, so we do need a closed session. That's already passed. Yeah, I, we passed that last night. Last year, make a motion that we go into closed session. Second. Where is closed session? I'm just glad I got to Well, we're going up here and stand.